So I have 1130. I think I'll get us started. This is Ed Crow. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. I'm doing this from I'm out of town. So I'm doing this on my laptop. So hopefully it'll go smoothly. I prefer to do it on my computer at home or at the office, but we'll see how it goes. So appreciate you coming on today. We're going to take a couple different topics and kind of meld them together. I'm going to talk about the CMS changes uh, specific to the carrier amongst a couple other things that are going to have a big impact on MAP, MA benefits. I brought MAPD, MA and MAPD benefits for 2025. We've got kind of a perfect storm of things coming together and I think it's going to um, have a major impact on the plans and what's being offered. So we'll talk about that. Talk about changes to agent compensation from the final rule and I'm going to try to blend that all together as to why um, you should offer ancillary products and if you haven't, why you should start focusing on offering them. Um, and something I'll say at the end when we get done here is our business just changes a lot. That's just the way it is. Um, I think the older I get, the harder it is for me to accept that. Um, but the reality is the people that embrace that change, that um, accept it and think in that regard are the ones who really will benefit from it the most. So it's just something that we got to get used to. Uh, if you're not used to it, it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. But there does create opportunity when there's change and this year is no different than any other so with that with that being said i think i'll get started um if you have questions please send them into the webinar i'll answer them at the end for you and like always we put these recordings we will email you the recording if you registered even if you didn't attend and we put them all on youtube so um that's youtube no space on my web my slide i hear right I see I have a space, but it's YouTube forward slash at Crow Medicare or just Google YouTube Crone Associates and subscribe to the channel if you could. Um, would appreciate that as well. So having said that, let's get started. So we're going to talk about the CMS changes, the how they've impacted MA offerings. Focus on four changes. There's really four things all happening in 2025 that are going to create this um, detrimental to a degree effect on the things we can do about it. Um, Changes to agent compensation, some of those things are still kind of undecided, but we'll talk about what it looks like at this point. Um, and again, how this will create, both of those things will create a need to sell ancillary products with MA. Uh, we'll just focus on two products today. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a, a mention of a third, but I promise we're just gonna focus on two. And really, these are the two that you would wanna offer if you're gonna offer anything with MA sales. Um, we'll also talk about how you want to include these products with the sales process. This is something that I've seen a lot of people do. I've done it myself. Uh, it's not hard. It's more an education to the client, making them aware of the risks and then building that into the sale. So again, I'll answer questions at the end and let's get started. Here. Okay, so let's start with a the theme that I think we just have to accept that MA plan benefits, uh, the medical benefits and the extra benefits especially are gonna be reduced from a lot of carriers in 2025. And it's based off four main factors, unfortunately all coming together in the same year. The first one that you don't hear as many people talk about, but really is maybe the biggest driver of it is the Part D drug cap of $2,000 in 2025. And I know in the general public, uh, when you see emails and things, they pitch this as a good thing. Well, it's good for some people. It's good for about 9% of the population, but the other 91% on Advantage plans are gonna suffer for it um, because the cap is gonna have a major financial impact on carriers. With, it's not only, we think of the cap as, okay, once they hit 2000, then there's no cost for the client and that's the carrier cost, but it's really more than that. Right now, as we talk today, when for a party drug plan, the government pays a lot of that cost. Um, but in 2025, not only is there going to be a 2000 cap, but it's also going to shift almost a complete shift of the cost from what the, the portion the government pays, which is their portion is the majority of it. It's almost going to be a 100% flip where the government is going to pay very little of it and the carrier is going to take on most of that cost so it's a cap and a big shift of cost and you know if we think that they're going to just make up for that on part d drug premium uh, part d plan premium prices they're not they're going to make up for it in a lot of areas on the ma plans especially so you have that then you have reduction in ma reimbursements 
So that's been, again, promoted as a 0.2% reduction. Uh, that's the national average. But the reality is, is it's based on state and county. And it's going to be a much bigger hit in some states. You have some states where it's going to result in a 3 or 4% reduction. Depends on the state. But overall, um, the states that have the lowest reduction tend to be the ones with the least amount of MA plans. Um, so that's going to be a factor. So there's two things. The third one is mandatory dental implants. Again, it, it's one of those things where it looks like it's a positive thing. So for those who aren't aware, uh, for 2025, MA plans must offer dental implant coverage in their dental benefits. And we might think, well, the dental plans have a cap, but the reality is it's going to max out a lot of those plans that otherwise wouldn't have been, and it's going to increase utilization a great deal. That on top of the fact that the carriers have to send out a notice of, a notice of unused benefits, uh, that will also increase utilization at dental plans. And then last two, probably this one more important than the very last one. Actually, I listed five things and said four. Sorry, I lied. Um, there's an increased weighting of payments based on the star rating, and that's going to be for 2025. So as you know, right now, plans are reimbursed based on star rating. The higher your star rating, the higher your reimbursement. But the government is increasing that proportionally, so they're going to weight it even heavier. Uh, and the, the weighting benefits those who are 4.5 and 5 stars. The ones that are below that are going to get hurt on the reimbursement based on that star star rating. So yeah for the plans that are 4.5 and 5 stars they should be okay they might even benefit a bit for the ones that are four and less uh, it's going to be an additional funding decrease for that and then lastly increase in behavioral health coverage um and great greater scrutiny on prior authorizations i think this is just the tip of the iceberg for 2025 this is gonna get ramped up a lot in future years but obviously um it's going to be a factor and it's going to become a bigger factor as years go on. If you don't let managed care plans manage care, and I know managed care doesn't always seem nice, um, but if you take that away from them, it's going to increase utilization. It's going to, you know, make loss ratios less favorable. Um, so that's going to play a factor as well. And then if we combine all those factors, that just leads to a lot greater costs for MA carriers. It really does it makes up. Uh, Makes it so they're going to make cuts. Um, so I would expect a reduction in benefits being offered in MA plans. Um, you're going to see a reduction in extra benefits, things we customers, clients have all gotten accustomed to, like dental, vision, OTC. I'm not saying they're going to get rid of those things, but they're certainly going to reduce them, uh, Part B reimbursements. Uh, and then you're going to see greater cost share on the medical benefits. There's only so much the carriers can do. The As you know, the max allowable out of pocket is 8,850. And, and I see there's a question coming in and don't worry, I will answer those at the end, but um, good idea to send them in now because I, as, as I said before, I've been told that I end the webinar abruptly at the end. So some people are still typing their questions. So send them in now is a good idea. Thanks, Tracy. Um, so the max allowable out of pocket is 8,850 in 2024, and, but many carriers are far below that. But I think you will see that they will be ramping those up um, so, you know, if a carrier is at 4,000 right now, I think you'll see they'll, they'll be ramping that out of pocket up. Um, and I don't know what the new max is going to be for 2025. Probably not much more, I would expect. And lastly, I'll say about this, this is not a one-year anomaly. These trends of coming in and putting mandating rules for carriers and things, ex what, what are perceived as benefits for clients, when you start doing enough of this, the carriers are going to have to make up for those costs, and your result is it's going to start watering the plans down. When you say, you know, mandatory implants, when you, you know, you can't manage care anymore. When you start adding all these things up, it the end result will be less extra benefits, higher out of pockets, a uh, potential on advantage plans. So I just talked over that bullet point. Like I said, greater cost exposure. Um, you know. If the plans, you know, obviously have to make up for costs and it's going to lead to greater cost exposure for clients, less extra benefits for clients, um, and then a need to offer ancillary products with the MA sale. So leads us to hospital indemnity. It's really the, the key thing here um, of two I'm going to talk about. 
one of the big things that can max a plan out on an MA is inpatient costs. So as we know, the plans are pretty standard with how they share cost on inpatient hospitalization. Uh, but I think it, it won't, don't be surprised if you see copays and days go up for inpatient hospital. One of the misconceptions people have, we as agents, um, is that we think the 60-day grace period is applicable to MA plans, it is not. So if a client goes in, they have a five-day, $400 a day inpatient hospital copay, they go in, they max it out, they come out of the hospital for a week, go back in, well, they're subject to the copays again. They do not have the 60-day grace period like you have on original Medicare. So obviously multiple hospital stays can push people towards their out-of-pocket max. And an out-of-pocket max that's gonna be higher in 2025 and an out-of-pocket max that is going to plan by plan most likely be higher in 2025. So more exposure for the client. So what you should do with hospital indemnity is when you're selling the MA plan, explain that inpatient hospitals, one of their biggest out-of-pocket risks, one of the biggest things that can push them uh, towards that out-of-pocket max on the plan and offer the hospital indemnity plan as a way to guard against that. I just ran a quick quote for today's webinar. I ran a 10-day benefit for $400 a day. Um, it's about $40 a month. The benefit, one thing is these are indemnity plans, so the benefit pays regardless of the client's cost share. So a lot of people say, well, $400 a day, what if their copay is only $250? doesn't matter. It's indemnity. If they're inpatient, it's going to get the $400 for every day they're in. So it doesn't matter what their out-of-pocket is. And then lastly, pretty much all of these plans will recharge after 60 days out of the hospital. So if somebody blows through their 10 days of 400 bucks a day, and that'll cover them on most Advantage plans right now for two different stays, you know. Um, but if they blow through that, if they're out for 60 days, uh, then that resets their benefits on the indemnity plan. So it never exhausts the plan. Some people have different thought on this. They'll go a 21-day benefit. Uh, in case you get multiple hospital stays within that 60 day period, you know, cause you gotta be out of the hospital 60 days to reset it. Um, I ran with, I went with the 10, uh, but you certainly could do a 20 or 21 day. A lot of carriers offer hospital indemnity plans, GTL, uh, UHC, which is United Health One, Cigna, Aetna, to name a couple. There, there's a bunch though. Obviously you could offer a Medicare, and what I did is when I was selling is I'd say to somebody, okay, I'd explain the hospital risk and say to them, if you can't stomach that risk, then let's look at a med sub, right? But you could do that in this demonstration. You could say to them, well, the alternative to a zero premium advantage plan is a med sub, but obviously if the premium of the med sub, no extra benefits. And then the other thing to consider is with that Part D drug cap at $2,000, you can draw your own conclusions as to where standalone Part D pricing is gonna go in 2025, 2026 and beyond. Um, there are some estimates from companies showing, you know, very high standalone average Part D premiums in a couple of years. So what you could do is show them the zero premium plan as an alternative to MedSup, or you could go with the Advantage plan with the hospital indemnity for 40 bucks a month. Usually they'll choose that, that option, the $40 over in Connecticut, say a MedSup for $220, a Part D drug, drug plan that's going to go up substantially on the next couple of years and uh, no extra benefits. The other one I'm gonna hit is cancer. Um, and again, there are many nationally, many agencies uh, that I know that those are two things they always sell alongside Advantage plans is they really stress the importance of hospital indemnity and cancer plans. And one of the reasons for the cancer plan is because that's a huge risk to hitting your out-of-pocket max. Radiation and chemo both have a 20% cost share in most MA plans. Radiation is considered therapeutic radiology. That's a 20% cost share and it's expensive. On uh, chemo, it's considered a Part D drug. And then uh, there's a lot of other, in addition to chemo, a lot of drugs that fall through Part D now um, that would be a 20% cost share. And that is not applicable to the $2,000 cap uh, when you're doing, I'm sorry, I, I mistyped on my slide here. It's considered a Part B drug at 20%. <laughs> it's a typo on my part. So chemo is considered Part B drug at 20%, and that would go towards the medical out-of-pocket cost, not the Part D drug cost. Apologize for the typo there. Anyhow, with plan out-of-pocket increases, this becomes a bigger risk to your client. So I quoted a cancer plan to give you an example. 
I just randomly picked them out, but I went with the GTL plan. I went with a 10K, $10,000 first diagnosis lump sum payment with recurrence rider. Uh, most of these plans will go up to 50,000, some even higher. Um, and it's an indemnity plan. So it doesn't matter what the client is paying. It simply is if you get diagnosed with cancer, they pay out the lump sum. So again, I chose 10,000, go higher than that. Uh, but again, if that if they got diagnosed with cancer, needed treatment, it's most likely gonna max their plan out on the out-of-pocket max, and that 10K would take care of it for them. So it's about $35 a month for a 10K lump sum with recurrence rider. And there's, again, a lot of companies that offer cancer plans. I just listed three of the more common ones, GTL, Cigna, and Aetna. Uh, there's a lot of others as well, though, however. So to summarize this, you basically would explain how both inpatient stays and cancer treatment are some of the biggest threats to hit the plan annual max, some of the biggest threats for your client to come out of pocket. And for about 70 bucks a month, they could protect against these risks. Um, if you compare it to a MedSup and a standalone drug plan, it's going to come out very favorably. And again, keeping in mind where Part D drug premiums, standalone drug premiums are going in 2025 and 2026. So adding additional products can protect clients. It can add additional, but also add additional revenue for us as producers. So you're really, you're helping your client, you're helping yourself. This is really something that we should all have been doing. I didn't do it as much, near as much as I should have. Um, call it laziness, call it just, you know, I'd get through the advantage sale and didn't want to do anything else, but really it is doing a disservice to your client and we are business people, so it can help them and it can help us both. Now, as regarding the CMS rules and agent compensation, um, some of this is up in the air still, but one thing that is known is CMS is making an additional $100 admin payment mandatory in commission. So one of the big differences is in the past, CMS listed the max commission that could be paid. Uh, almost all carriers paid it, but the language is different this year and it is mandatory. It's not a suggestion. The carriers, if they're going to pay commissions, they got to pay the max and they have to pay the $100 admin fee as well. And it looks like it's going to be $50 on the renewal. But some of the big questions we have is, what about the states that paid higher than the national amount? That's still unanswered. Um, you've got Connecticut, D.C., PA, and then you've got New Jersey and California that are the highest. Are they going to make it so all commissions are at the national level? That is where it's leaning to right now, um, but that has not been verified. It will be on April 27th. That's the date when CMS is going to come out with an, uh, an official document with further clarification. That question has been brought up many times for them to clarify that. Um, but if I had a hunch, it kind of looks to me like they are going to the national level, so everybody will be in the national bucket. We know that HR fees are no, HRA fees are no longer going to be allowed, so there's a revenue reduction for some producers that do the HRAs. And then the big question is marketing money and reimbursements. It looks to me like they won't be allowed. Um, that's what it looks like. Now, will there be workarounds to that that are compliant? I'm not sure. Um, but my initial, from what I'm seeing, it looks like marketing money and reimbursements won't be allowed any longer. Um, and then it leads to the question, what about other services like that an upline provides, CRMs, Connect Your Sunfire websites, overrides? Other benefits of value, will they be allowed? We don't have the answer to that yet. A lot of this will depend on what the carriers say. Um, and a lot of it will depend on what that document that comes out April 27th says. Um, but again, the way it's leaning is it's looking like those things, to some extent anyway, will not be allowed. So overall, um, this will lead to extra out-of-pocket costs for agents, in some cases, less revenue for agents. And this trend, if you ask me, I've been doing this a long time and I've seen this kind of thing happen it's almost like ground, Groundhog's Day. It happens a lot. I think this trend will continue. Uh, I don't think it's going to go the other direction. Um, so that's why it's important to get in the habit of offering extra products with your MA sales now. Again, to help your client out, but also to help yourself out too as a business person. So quick last thought on this. Uh, find, I think, in addition to hospital indemnity and cancer, I also recommend you find a good standalone dental and vision plan that you can offer just in case. And I say that because we are gonna see reductions in MA benefits. You know, again, with the mandatory dental implants, you're definitely gonna see a dental reduction, max benefit dental reduction. So if MA plans aren't offering 
great dental and vision benefits in 2025 and especially in 2026, um, you know, you, you might want to have good standalone options you can offer. So it might be a scenario where you're no longer just offering standalone dental and vision to your supplement clients, med sub clients, but you're also may need to offer it to your Advantage clients. Um, we have a lot of good dental and vision offer uh, options. Uh, if you're interested, we have one that's really unique um, that uses the best network and it waives the waiting period in the first year. It's a full 50% benefit from day one. Um, so call us if you have questions about that. Be happy to get you set up. Good comp too. My last thought of the day, and I never usually do thoughts like this, but as I said in the beginning, our business is constantly changing. Um, but what we've seen and what I've seen over the years, I've certainly had times where things have changed. And then later on, I've kicked myself and said, man, I could have I could have leveraged that and I could have uh, benefited greatly had I been more accepting of it and, and thought more proactively about it. But but the what I've learned is those that anticipate that change, they're always going to adapt. Those that anticipate and change that change and adapt to it are always going to do well and thrive in this business but you got to be open um, to that thought process and I, I honestly think if I had to guess offering ancillary products will be very important uh, down the road for us and something that really why not do it um, like I said thanks for attending let's see if we have some questions we do have some okay so Question is, do you think we will see a mass exodus of providers accepting MA so they don't have to deal with the additional aggravation? I don't think so. I mean, of course, you're always gonna have providers that are annoyed by MA. Uh, but I think MA is so prevalent that most providers, unless they're gonna go concierge or unless they're just gonna, um, they have such a big client base, patient base, I should say, they don't care. Um, most providers will be able to even if they want to. And truthfully, most of the aggravation is going to be on the carrier. So a lot of this, these restrictions on managed care will be a carrier's problem, not the provider's. Somebody said, what does higher scrutiny on prior authorizations mean? It means scrutiny on the carriers and the restrictions and the, the barriers they can put in place on prior auth, lessening of those, making it easier to get care without needing approval for it. Hopefully that answered your question. Oh, I was waiting for this one, Joe. Uh, what ancillary products are available in New York? Uh, actually, Dental Dental and Vision is available in New York. Um, we have the, the dental option that uses, like I said, the big network and waives the waiting period. So that's available in New York, full network too. Um, but it is a challenge for other lines of business. New York is tough. Uh, cancer, hospital indemnity. Uh, we're actively looking for somebody that offers. I know there are a couple out there, none of the standard carriers, uh, but there are a couple. But you're right, that is a challenge in New York. Chemo is actually Part B. Yes, that, that was a typo on my slide. It is Part B. And it, so as, since it's Part B, it does not go towards the D cap of 2000. It's going to go right towards the medical out-of-pocket cap on the advantage plans. Somebody asked, do you think there is still going to be zero premium MAPD plans? Yes, I do. I think that's kind of the holy grail for the carriers. I think that's the last thing they want to get rid of. And I think they'll sacrifice a lot of other stuff um, before they get rid of zero premium. It's a great question. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so somebody asked, are there many states that the carriers don't offer hospital indemnity? No, there are not that many. However, New York is one of them. New York's a tough state, but most do offer hospital indemnity. What's your take on the rules comp applying to FMOs and TPMOs? It's interesting. I, my guess, and I'm guessing because we have to really see, at the end of the day, my guess doesn't matter. It all comes down to what do the carriers decide? They're really driving everything here and they're the ones that will make the decision. So really what they determine, how they interpret the rules, well, that's all that really matters. But my take is that FMOs will still get overrides. Um, but I think there's going to be some some limitations on those, and I think there's gonna be major limitations on reimbursement stages. So I think a reduction across the board, I guess to answer your question. How does selling an indemnity plan work with the rules of cross-selling? It's a health product. So hospital indemnity and cancer and dental and vision are health products, so you can make the sale at the same time you're selling the advantage. Good question. What are some, Suggestions on good standalone dental and vision carriers, uh, a few. 
Uh, I think ours is the best one. Uh, obviously, I'm biased, um, but we're using the biggest network that's available nationally. And again, they waive waiting periods. Um, it's a full 50% benefit. It has benefit carryover. Um, I think that's a great offering. We also have offerings from NCD. They have a, an offering that has MetLife as the network. The network is very important with the dental plan. Um, so the National Care Dental with the MetLife network, and I think our private offering we have is, are really the are very good options. Now let's see what else we got for questions. Will CMS give further clarification on non-cash compensation, Sunfire, et cetera? Yes, I think they will on April 27th, but again, uh, they'll give further clarification. How clear will that be? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it just matters what the carriers decide, like how they interpret that language in the decision they make, because those are the ones really who will control it. Will commission be the same? Um, well, yeah, that's the question. Will commission be the national level? Like, you know, New York's in the national bucket. So is everybody going to get shoved down to the national amount, meaning California, DC, PA, New Jersey, and I'm sorry, let me start, try that again. Connecticut, DC, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and California, will they be shoved down to the national amount? We don't know that. But yeah, it will be the national amount at least with the $100 on top. Uh, thanks, Ed, for the information. Have a great vacation. Thank you, Cindy. And, but Cindy has left, so she didn't hear me say thank you. Uh, what clarification are we waiting for on April 27th? Let me just click on this question so I can see it. What clarification are we waiting for from CMS on April 27th? Just a high-level overview. No, actually the opposite. Um, they send out the final rule and make it final, but then they later on they send out a clarifying document that's more specific or supposed to be more specific. So a lot of the carriers are waiting on that. That's a document that is going to, since the final rule came out, Questions were raised, um, and this document should have more detail on answers to those questions. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, FYI, Delta Dental is rolling out two new plans in Connecticut in June 1st. One has a $5,000 benefit. Well, that's good to know. Um, and we do have that offering um, for a plan. So we do have offer Delta for those who are interested. Um, I think that's all we got for questions. Let's see. Anything else coming in? It looks to me like that's it. Well, I appreciate everybody coming on today. Thank you um, for joining me. Uh, again, like I said, this will be recorded. We'll put it on YouTube, uh, youtube.com uh, forward slash at Medicare. And um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thanks.